Hi, welcome to shikhan.com. In today's video, we are going to learn how to use a full table in MS Excel. First, let's open a MS Excel document. After opening, we will save our file in the Windows bar. At first, we will see what things we have to do for making a table. First, we will focus on those parts which are required to make a table. Basically, we are talking about the content and we are going to decide how many rows and columns are needed here. For example, if we make a document and frame an invoice, then what we have to do is item name, item description, price, quantity, then comes the total price. So basically, the number of columns required are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We will drag 5 of them and downwards we can drag as many columns as required for the product. It is not important to count and drag all the columns in one time. We have the liberty to increase or decrease the column whenever we would like. After that, we will focus on the toolbar option that is on the above. And the name of that option is Format as Table. Today we will learn the use of this option. We will get to know about its function. In our last video, we have learned general and number formatting. Then, we have also learned about text designing. So today we will learn the function of format as table. We will select our workflow here and click format as table. And then we will see a lot of table designs has appeared in front of us. Here we have light design, medium design, even dark design. We can use any of them according to our convenience. If we select any of the design from here, then one option will appear in front of us where it has text with dollar signs, which include dollar sign A, dollar sign 4, then colon, then dollar sign E, dollar sign 13. So now, what is this? This means our table starts from A4. So here we have A4 and it exits from E13. So we have E13. So we don't have to give much effort here because when we will increase or decrease, it won't matter. As we know, for making a table, function is required. That's why formatting appeared right in front of us. Then we have an option, my table has headers. It means if my table contain any heading, then we have to click on the checkbox, then press OK. With that, we will see two other things. First one is the formatting place that we had selected earlier. That place has been converted into a table and at the above we can see a new icon table tool has been appeared where all the options related to the table has been given. It means we will only get functions related to the table and nothing else. If we look carefully people only find options which are related to table functions here. So now let's see. Here we will see some of the given options. The design which we have selected. Its panel has already appeared here. If we want to change the design, then we can see certain changes of color and design in our format. Now the design we want to choose, we will place here. And even if we want to select a dark design, we can do that. We can add any design that we want. When we select it, our toolbar option will appear above here. If we click on an empty place, the table toolbar will not appear. When we click on the table, our option will start to appear once again. We can go to the home option to change any text size. Then we can repeat the same process. Click on the table tool option here and change the size of text accordingly. Now we will see different kinds of functions using different options. If we want to change the table style, then we will select here and select any style here. Then we can connect all those styles to our main table here. After that, we have table style options. Here we can see the first options header row. If we remove the header row, then we will see that it already has vanished. But for a table, a header is very important. So now let us put the title in our heading for giving the proper recognition to the content. To understand whether it's student's name, his father's name, his mobile number, quantity, email, address over the details. For example, we give heading father's name and then fill details accordingly. Then again, we will keep heading student's name and fill accordingly. So this is the function of headers row. Then comes total row as because they are making the inbox. When we will put the price, then a total field will appear. 
if we make a row for total then we will see automatically a total row has appeared and if we click on the last option then we will see that already in our function box the function has arrived here if we write the total then we don't have to work extra on the function automatically the function will appear here then we have first column and the last column for that we have to change the style for example if we do like this then let's see whether it works or not if we click on the first column then we can see that it doesn't affect here this is because we have different options and settings but different designs and formats are here for example the design in the middle second row if we click here then we will click on first column then we will see our first column has changed into a different color in the same way if we click on the last column it will be highlighted for example if in any design we need to highlight the first and last column suppose for an instance final price or any column that i want to highlight we can simply click on the first and the last column and use this design after that we have bended column in bended columns if in this style we go to print preview as because our small printer was set up that's why the layout has not come properly so if i change my printer here again we will go to print print preview now if we see here we can see a white color thing here which is not actually a border now if we change the table design then it will be better to understand we will go back to the table and then we'll select this design then let's go to print preview now we can see that only our row lines are present here and our column lines are not present in this table and for bringing that back we will go to the table tool press this option and let's go back to the print preview then we can see that our box shape has returned hence our column lines are back in the table suppose in our layout we forget to give the columns or we have designed in our own way in that case if we press this option then the color will come then after printing it will come in the box format so here we have seen the different options for styling our table now we will see the five columns that we have taken now we want to add two extra columns here very simply what we can do is that the field after or before which we want our columns we will click on that after that we will go to home here on the right hand side we can see three options or uh, two options are here insert and then delete if we click on insert then we can see we will see two options here insert tables column to the left insert table columns to the right if we want to increase some column in the left then we will click on the left then we can see that our column has increased in the same way if we want to increase our column to the right then we will click on the right and we can see that in the left and right both sides we have new columns now we can do this more simply we can click on the box then right click on the mouse here also we can see the insert option table column to the left table row above it means we added a column here right now suppose we want to increase a row if we want more rows down if we click on row above from 13 rows it has become 14 rows which means it increased in this way we can increase and decrease our row and columns according to our convenience now i want to delete these two columns here the columns that we have just added we don't want these we want to delete these so simply what we can do is we can click on g and then a delete button has arrived if we click on the delete button then we can see that it has been deleted or if we simply click on the column then press delete from our keyboard sorry the keyboard is not working currently if we click here then right click on the mouse button after selecting delete it will be deleted now we do have one more shortcut if we look at the corner of our table here we can see an angle is present now if we drag this towards the right then also we can see that the columns are increasing so there are three ways in which we can increase or decrease our rows and columns okay we can insert it from here right click on our mouse button or we can use this corner button and drag it to increase or decrease our tables so up to this far we have learned how to increase and decrease our columns and rows and how to design our table options then how to change the color option and we learn the functions of different options in the table tool now we will see the table that we brought at first let's save our work with control and s if we look carefully there is an arrow kind of thing in our table 
This arrow can be called sortable column, which means we can sort our contents of the columns like this way. But if you want to know what is sortable, let me say, let's say we write a kahi color. Then we can write here blue color. And then we can give, for example, a, you know, Zen color. Zen color. And then, for example, we can give pink color. Now see. Sortable is known as ascending or descending, which means the content will be seen according to the name format. It means when we have a lot of content, we will face this when we do a student database. There will be a huge database consisting of 200 to 300 items. Then if we want, we can see the data in ascending or descending order. It means in ABCD serial. It will be easy for us to calculate that because we will know right where we can find our names. But if it is randomized, then it will be very hard for us to find the names. Now here we can see B is right after A. But by ascending, K should be before Z. But here Z is before K. Now let's click on this arrow. Then we click sort A to Z. Then we can see that K has already arrived in the right place. So we have to keep in mind that when we will use such a function, we should always do it in ascending and descending format. By doing that, we can work in our database very easily and in a very organized way. Similarly, in column 2, we will give item description. We will also give item name, description, quantity and price. So if we write the heading as name, then details, and then price, then comes quantity, and lastly, total. So in this way, we will give uh, 200 for 50, 500 and 600. This has a sale of 10, then 20, then 50 and 40. Now as because our quantity is in number format, it is already in the right side. Now we will put this heading towards the right side. We have already learned how to do that in our last video. If you haven't seen that, you can go and watch our last video. So in this way, we created a table format to make our invoice. Here we have created a monthly invoice. Now if we want to do the coloring manually, which means if we want to highlight any particular row or any particular column, then very simply we can go to the background color option. So if we highlight this, then we can see that the particular row has been highlighted. In case if we want to highlight this, then we can go here and press red. It completely depends on the design that I want. Suppose we are having a lots of rows and if we would like to highlight one or two of them only, in that case, we can work like this. Using this format, we can highlight or we can do ascending or descending and easily create our database. Now, we will see how we will complete the invoice design database. As we have learned in our last videos how to calculate, so we will just put formula and calculate. If you guys haven't seen those videos, then please go and check them out first. So for doing some, we have to first write equal, then sum bracket. Now we will drag these two boxes. We have seen this in our previous videos. Now as we already know, when we drag these boxes, we can see that the names of the boxes already are put in the bracket with a column. But here we can see that it comes table 1, this row, price and quantity. It means the names of the headings are coming here. We can do all the calculations like plus minus with these only. But we will not do this because we are just beginners and we are still learning. We will use this later but as for now, we will use the process that we learned in the last videos. Here we see that our selling price is 200 and the selling quantity is 10. So we will multiply 200 to 10. So C5 multiplied by using the star mark. 
then we will write d5 it means c5 multiplied by d5 then press enter so now we can see that our total number is 2000 for more clarity we can double check with the calculator present in our computer so here per piece price is 450 that multiplied by 20 will give us an amount of 9000 because of our table options all the calculations are automatically completed in here now this price has already been converted into number format but this one has not been converted so we will convert this one by selecting but we can see that our total has not been calculated so for that we will give equal sum after that so we already know two functions if we have more rows for that we will write e5 In this way, we will drag and then select E5 and then we will give a colon. Then we will go for our last column that is E15. Now see, here is the catch. Last time we used star but here we will use column. Reasons is if we want to connect more rows then we have to use star instead of column. For that you can watch our last videos. Now enter so the total price is 60,000. So in this way we can create an invoice and perform all its functions very effectively. That too in very simple and easy methods. Thank you for watching shikhan.com.